Hello and welcome to this new episode of uh, I Dream of Wise. Today, as we often do, we'll take a look at how to introduce a lot of variation without using too much memory or too much CPU. In particular, this video will talk about the random generator in WISE. In episode 4 of this series, I already talked about how to use the random generator, but in that case, it was um, a random generator that we had to build in WISE because it didn't exist at the time. And that's because we were working on WISE 2016 and WISE 2017 hadn't been released yet. WISE 2017 introduces the random generator, so that opens so many possibilities in terms of uh, real-time uh, design and variation of our assets. So let's take a look at how this random generator works. A good way to test it is to instantiate a sine wave. Here we go, add source, wise sine, and first let's lower the volume to minus 20. I'll pick a lower frequency and I'll make it loop. Okay, so now we go to the RTPC tab. I think a good way to test the random generator is by affecting the pitch over time, okay? So let's select voice pitch. And in here, on the x-axis, we want an LFO, okay? because the random generator is now one of the possible waveforms of the LFO, okay? It's the last one here. So in here, we want a range that goes, let's say, from minus 300 to plus 300, okay? And uh, depth, we can leave it to 100%. Frequency 1 is okay for now. Waveform, we selected the random one. And uh, as for the smoothing, we'll take a look at how it works a little bit later on. Okay, let's play and hear how it sounds like. Okay, so the frequency of the sine wave changes over time. And that is because uh, every period of time specified by the frequency in the random generator the random generator itself picks a new value and that determines the new frequency of the sine wave. In this case, it picks a new value every one second, but this is not the period, this is the frequency. So if we set it to two, of course, it would pick a new value every half a second. So this is not smooth at all, right? Because the moment it picks a new random value, it immediately jumps to that value. So let's try and uh, set the smoothing parameter to something like 50. Much smoother. Let's test something like 25. So with 25, we can still hear the steps. We can still tell when it selects a new random frequency, but the curve goes there in a smooth way. Let's think about the smoothing parameter as uh, the portamento in uh, synthesizers, if you're familiar with that. So let's try an extreme value like 100 and see what happens. It seems like it's not doing anything, while well, actually it's trying to go to the new values that are given by the random generator, but the smoothing is so slow that it can't even get close to them. So we can see that the random generator has potentially a lot of uh, applications. And we will now take a look at uh, one scenario where the random generator could be very, very useful. So earlier this year, I worked on the sound for a movie called The First Light. And I was in charge of uh, part of the backgrounds. The movie was set in the countryside in the United States. So the sound of the crickets was very important. And the main sound designer of the movie told me that he wanted stereo crickets, but he didn't want continuous beds of stereo crickets from the start to the finish of the scene. He wanted a little bit of them and then they faded out and then maybe they came in again a few seconds later and uh, they didn't have to keep always the same pattern, the same frequency. He wanted them to move in some way because he wanted them to sound interesting, okay? 
I think this is a very good example of a possible use of a random generator. Of course, in the movie, I didn't think about using a random generator. I just worked with the tools I had in Pro Tools. So I just used uh, fades and pitch shift and stuff like that. But I think that to do something like that dynamically in Wise is very interesting. So in here, I have a loop of crickets. Let's listen to them. I set it to be an infinite loop. And what I want to do now is uh, go into the RTPC tab and use a random generator to affect the voice pitch. Okay, so as we saw earlier, let's instantiate an LFO set to random. We can keep depth to 100% for now. And I want to affect the pitch in a range that goes from minus 100 to 100 cents. So a pretty small range for now. We'll see how it works later. So let's listen to how it sounds now. Okay, it could use some smoothing for sure. And the frequency could be slower. So I would say 0.3 is a good frequency. Okay, I believe that the pitch variation is uh, a bit too much. So let's set the depth to 40. Actually, it would be the same to reduce the range of um, this pitch curve, but it's a bit simpler to do it from here. I think that the effect now is uh, subtle, but it adds some variety. It makes the sound more interesting. Now, we still have the problem that the sound of the crickets is uh, continuous. It never stops. So what I want to do is uh, to put this crickets acid in uh, a sequence container that we'll still call crickets, okay? And in the sequence container, we'll also instantiate the silence acid, okay? And uh, of course, we'll add source why silence and we'll set it to let's say four seconds plus or minus two seconds in the playlist we'll drag and drop these two elements the crickets and the silence now of course right now the crickets are set to loop indefinitely so it will never go into silence so what i'll do is uh, set the number of loops to be random starting from six with a minimum offset of two and a maximum offset of two as well. And that is because the loop I'm using is actually very, very short. So if you take a look at here, it says that the duration of the original file is 71 seconds. But actually, if we double click, we see that what we're using of that file is a very, very short portion. It's actually 1.6 seconds. I selected this loop so that it contains just seven repetitions of the sound of the cricket. So let's listen to it. The reason why I picked seven is because it's a prime number. And especially it's not a multiple of three or a multiple of four. If I had picked a number of repetitions that was a multiple of three or four, I would have had a much easier time figuring out that what I was listening to was a very short loop. And that is because I have been trained in music and uh, in what we're used to call Western music. And Western music is all about patterns of four. So my ear is trained to figure out these repetitions and by picking a number such as seven, I have a harder time figuring out the loop. So as we were saying, we picked a number of six loops, so it will be something like uh, 10 seconds, I guess, plus or minus two loops, okay? And then go into silence for a few seconds, for plus or minus two seconds, and then go back to crickets. And to do it this way, we have to set the playlist to continuous, loop, and uh, we want to use transitions. I think that a good transition to use is just the default crossfade. And for the duration, I will pick 0 0.8 seconds. So let's listen to how it sounds.
So by comparison, this would be without the random generator. So the random generator adds a very subtle variation in pitch, but I think it's pretty effective. This was just an example, but of course you can come up with a lot of possible creative uses for the random generator. For example, with volume, if you want something not to sound always at the same volume over time. In our case, the transition from the cricket sound to silence is not the smoothest, but you have also to think that there will be also another bed underneath, another layer of backgrounds. So the transition between crickets and silence won't be so drastic and so noticeable. I hope you liked this video and uh, thank you for watching.